Well, hello there, motherfuckers. And I am here to talk about the Stone Cold Podcast with Vince McMahon. I love this podcast. Stone Cold asked all the right questions. He asked everything we wanted to hear. And did we hear everything we wanted to hear? Well, maybe. It really depends on how you really look at it. Do we really want to hear Vince McMahon admit to certain things here? Or, you know, do we simply want him to lie about them? Was he bullshitting through a lot of this? To a certain extent. But really, I think we pretty much got genuine Vince. We got a real kayfabe. They actually talked like wrestling was fake here. They talked about people going over and, and, and shit like that. Um... So there was no kayfabe to be had. This was fucking real life. This was, they were talking about writing the shows. Uh, they were talking about all that type of shit right there. There was no Vince McMahon character. There was nothing like that. That was, um, th th this was, this was pretty much real. And I really appreciated what was presented here. Now, this is some stuff on the network that will make it interesting. Because WWE's got to look at that. We're going to shit like Art of Wrestling, watching that. They have to start producing some of their own stuff that's like that. Otherwise, we're just going to go on the fucking internet and just watch some other person's fucking shit that might be less professional with less production values. But, you know, a lot of times we're getting harder hitting interviews and we're not getting that kayfabe shit that they put on the DVDs half the time. With the wrestlers talking in their personas. Well, we want to hear... You know, the man behind the scenes, you know, the thing is, actors, they play in movies. You know, I'm sure when Sylvester Stallone, you know, we love him as Rocky, you know, and, and, and we love him as Rambo, but we want to hear the man behind those characters. And that's why they do normal fucking interviews. That's why, you know, they had uh, fucking back in the day, um, fucking Johnny Carson and shit started up their own fucking shows so they could talk to these people. We could get interviews with them and learn about who they are. Stone Cold does that on this podcast. We really kind of learned who Vince McMahon was. And we really learned how out of touch he is and what a real big time bullshit artist he is. Thank you, Stone Cold, for fucking that, bringing that out to all of us wrestling fans. Well, we kind of knew that in the past from what everybody said, but this was really from the horse's mouth or from the horse's ass's mouth. And if you really had any doubts if Vince McMahon knows what he's doing or if Vince McMahon really knows how to run the company, then really, you really need to take a look at this podcast. I mean, this gets the biggest full recommendation here. Spoiler fucking alert. Because I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to watch this. It's Stone Cold. It's Vince McMahon. This is exciting. This is a lot of stuff. So, um... Spoilers from this point on, okay, people? So fuck you if you watch beyond this point. There's a review. I'm recommending it. It's, you know, it's a real-time interview. It's, it's you know, it's, it's big shit. You got to hear it. So Stone Cold, um, you know, asked Vince McMahon about the network, and he says, you know, it, like all things, it needs to pick up steam, and that's that's true. I will believe that. You know, it's still fairly new. They just fucking released the thing in February. Speaking from, you know, not a comical standpoint, not screaming and raging, you know, Network sucks! Make it better! No! You know, the thing is, it's still new. You know, we didn't hear about Netflix for a certain amount of years. Their streaming service, you know, it first started out as like mail-in DVDs, and then they brought it to the streaming service. And it gained popularity after quite a few years of being on the market, so... You know, that, that's the thing. I mean, but then again, you could argue the point that WWE is already an established company. And they do have many other avenues that Netflix didn't have available to advertise. Such as three fucking hours on Monday nights! Three fucking hours on the actual, even when you fucking watch the fucking pay-per-view, they're fucking advertising it out the ass. Two hours on SmackDown? Their website, it's all over the place. They have ads all over the fucking place about it. So, you know, you could argue that point. So the thing is, 
it might be that it might need to pick up steam, but it might also fucking mean this. That uh, how about this? They didn't, you know, they keep talking about the ninety-seven percent uh, satisfaction rate. I don't know. I mean, I did see that, but the thing is, it's like, who did they pull, and why did they lose so many subscriptions here in the U.S. If that is the case. Doesn't sound like 97% of the people are satisfied with this product. Like I said, I personally am. I think the ability to go back and watch any of the old material is well worth the fucking 10 bucks a month. Which is really shouldn't be any skin off of anybody's ass. Even me. I want a pretty tight budget. But $10 a month for something that I love and am passionate about. I'm more than willing to fucking pay it. No longer do I have to sit there and fucking stream low quality fucking streams of fucking pay per views that aren't even good anyway. At least I can watch the shittiness in HD, motherfuckers, you know? So, anyway, he talked about the network. Then he talked about the direction of the company. Of course, Vince McMahon says that he likes it. Well, to a certain extent, he would go on to criticize things. Showing that Vince McMahon is bullshitting, but he is somewhat on par with reality. But he's kind of going back to his old ways of pre-attitude here of being totally out of touch. He talked about how much he thought Raw was good. He talked about Bray Wyatt looking good. And he did. But Bray Wyatt has looked better on other occasions. And I don't really... And, you know, from what I saw, Bray Wyatt was punished. Buried. They refused to put him over Cena in a respectable fashion. Instead, they embarrassed him. Made him look lesser than. And then, he talked about the main event being, you know, uh, pretty fucking good. And it was pretty fucking bad. And there's very few people that could say they could be entertained by that slow, fucking slow-paced action. Unless you've never seen wrestling before. I mean, they... This was a pretty fucking slow match. There was really none to get excited about. So that was his opinion. He thought Raw was pretty good. I thought it was pretty shitty. Not the worst show ever, but it definitely wasn't worthy of praise. Stand behind your product. I know he's the owner and everything, but you know, he could be honest. Especially since he would go on about this. Stone Cold would bring up points about himself in this podcast. About you know the boys being motivated and everything. And Vince McMahon admits the locker room is not as motivated as they used to be. And that they have more tools at their disposal. And Vince McMahon actually admitted he is confused why, you know, um, so so many wrestlers are demotivated. Then Stone Cold went on to ask him about guys like Cesaro. And Vince McMahon said that his character is just not catching on. He doesn't have the mic skills. But the thing is... You had wrestlers that didn't have Mike Sills that Vince McMahon had no problem putting in the main events. Chris Benoit wasn't an exceptional talker. There were many others that weren't exceptional talkers but found their way to the top. That's just one that comes to fucking mind. Um, so, you know, there's really nothing like that. You know what I mean? Like You also had guys like Ken Shamrock who were featured prominently. And he really wasn't that much of, you know, he screamed, he hit himself in the head, he had charisma, but he wasn't much of a talker. Cesaro has, wrestles pretty energetic matches. And, uh, you know, his strength is definitely part of who he is. That might not be personality, but it definitely gives him a tangible element that people could get behind, and the crowd's behind him. So, fuck his character, if the crowd's behind him, push the man. But Vince McMahon admits that, you know, he's confused. You know, he says pretty much he doesn't have a magic wand. He can't get somebody over. They have to get themselves over. Well, the thing is, guys like Cesaro were fucking over. And Vince McMahon seemed like he was doing everything in his power to, you know, uh, ruin that. And Stone Cold talked about that. Putting him with Heyman was going to get him booed. And why did he do that? And Vince McMahon kind of just really glossed over that type of question. Gave 
a pretty bullshit excuse, didn't really answer the question too well, because he probably really didn't know how to. I mean, you know, he wouldn't admit to fucking up, basically. And you could admit that, you know, you could say, you know what could be done better, Stone Cold said, to book the man better. How can you book him to be a more effective talent on the roster? And Vince simply did not have the answer to that. And that, I have to say, is pretty fucking sad. Then Stone Cold asked them about the writing team. Why is it so large? And he didn't go out and say that, you know, the shows were bad or anything. You know, Stone Cold didn't want to rip Vince McMahon apart, and I can understand that. They are friends. You don't want to rip apart your friend and the guy who gave you so many opportunities. You know, but the thing is, it is a ridiculously large writing staff. And based on what they write, which could be written by fucking kindergartners with fucking guys jumping around in bunny suits. There's no excuse why guys like, you know, uh, Ed Ferrara or whatever the fuck his name was and Vince Russo and McMahon could all get together and just write a really fucking good show with just a couple of people in the room, like Stone Cold said. Versus today where they have a whole fucking staff. It's just pretty fucking mind-numbingly ridiculous to really even fathom why they would need such a massive fucking squad of, of pencil pushers to get a fucking shit-ass show off the ground. I mean, I'm looking at this fucking show I just reviewed and you're telling me fucking 50 fucking people it took to write that piece of shit? You gotta be fucking kidding me. Then he asked Vince McMahon about the CM Punk interview. And of course, McMahon lied and said that he didn't hear it. Bull fucking shit. You think that Vince McMahon is not going to listen to a tell-all interview that he knew that was probably going to be mostly about himself? Something where he could have possibly sued, uh, you know, um, CM Punk over slander and shit? You better believe he had a team of lawyers watching that fucking shit right there on the internet. He said that he heard certain things. Let's just get this straight. When someone says they've, you know this from personal life, has nothing to do with fucking wrestling. When someone's heard something, they've been doing a lot of fact checking. They've been looking around. They know what's going on. They're not that oblivious to it. So, I heard means I know everything. So, he, know, he heard the fucking interview. He sat down in this fucking computer and his fucking underwear and fucking watched that, that fucking shit right there. He watched that on YouTube. He watched Art of Wrestling. And you damn well know he did. He said CM Punk embellished a lot. He did apologize for, you know, CM Punk's uh, walking papers arriving on his wedding day saying it was purely coincidental. That is a coincidence if I ever did see one. I mean, the thing is, CM Punk had been out of the company for a long time. January. The end of January. And you're fucking telling me it took all the way to fucking June, July, whatever it was. It was one of those. I think it was June. You're telling me it takes five months for them to send out a fucking uh, pink slip? That's bull fucking shit. That, check the facts on that one. That's fucking bullshit. That was meant as a slap in the face. Vince McMahon even tired himself as to be a pretty shy introvert. Even Stone Cold called bullshit on that one. Uh, also what was talked about was, um, just going off the top of my head, I'm probably going to miss a couple of things, but, uh, Stone Cold asked him about Brock Lesnar being champion. And this one, this one kind of pissed me off a bit. Because if anybody knows from any of my fucking wrestling rants or reviews that I regularly do, I like Brock Lesnar. I love Brock Lesnar. I'm a major fan of Brock Lesnar. I've been a fan of Brock Lesnar since 2002, since, you know, um, since he started doing big things in the WWE. He got behind Brock Lesnar. And when he started gaining more steam in 2003, I started becoming an even bigger fan of Brock Lesnar. But the way they're booking Brock Lesnar and allowing Brock Lesnar to be booked is fucking ridiculous. 
The fact that they pay the man $6 million to appear on select dates is just mind-numbing. And it just seems desperate. It is desperate. That they would need the services of a man who is very good and is one of the best of all time. And, you know, managed to adjust to the world of professional wrestling probably faster than anybody else. The only other person would be Kurt Angle that comes to mind. Not even... Guys like Stone Cold adjusted that fast. Not even guys like The Rock adjusted that fast. Not even fucking Mick Foley adjusted that fast. But Brock Lesnar did. So I could see why he might get pretty high salary. Definitely deserves it. If everybody else is making a high salary. You better <laughs> fucking bet your bottom fucking dollar that Brock Lesnar deserves to make just as much as those other guys. Deserves to be making as much as fucking Triple H. Uh, but the fact that he has not been on TV for over two months, going on three months, it is going to be three months because it's pretty apparent now that he's not going to be there next week. He's going to be appearing during the Royal Rumble, if not just at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view itself. This is... The fucking analogy he gave. And if you didn't watch the podcast or you don't plan on watching the podcast and you're just a fan of these videos, then I really want you to listen carefully to as I reiterate what Vince McMahon said. You know, uh, just paraphrase perhaps. I'm not going to get the words down. I don't have a transcript in front of me. Sorry. But the thing is, this is what Vince McMahon said. About Brock Lesnar not appearing as much as most people would like. Including myself. Um, it's like Jake the Snake Roberts. When Jake the Snake first burst on the scene in WWE. He had Damien with him. The giant python snake. And everybody was taken aback by the fact that Jake the Snake Roberts. Carried a giant snake into the ring. Everybody oohed and odd And... You know, it was something you never saw before. You know, it was a rarity to see, you know, a fucking, you know, a reptile like that in the ring. You know, it was like a spectacle. Then after a while over the years, as Jake the Snakes became more of a regular on uh, WWE television, WWF television, whatever, for the sake of being politically correct. Um, Vince McMahon said that as he was on TV more and more, the spectacle was gone. Because people, you know, he said, being as jaded as they are, which is true, you know, we, we grow accustomed to things. And they don't seem as special as they once were. And that's definitely an interesting philosophy. It's definitely a, a, a philosophy that holds a lot of weight. It, it certainly does. So, he compared... Brock Lesnar to that saying that it would be the same thing if Brock Lesnar showed up on every single Raw, the S SmackDown, every single pay-per-view. He'd be a lot like Jake the Snake. He would have lost his luster, lost his spectacle. There's only one fucking problem with that. He's the fucking champion, and he ain't fucking Jake the Snake, and he'd already been around for several years prior to that. And... The fact of him being a spectacle has not gained them any ratings. The ratings are the same fucking thing as when he was there full time in 2003. As I said, it really hasn't changed that much. As a lot of people like to say, they like to tout that the PG era is the you know the modern fall of professional wrestling in the ratings. When really the ratings have been the same thing for fucking 10 years straight. Making wrestlers into spectacles doesn't mean fucking shit nowadays. This is not Bruno San Martino where no one has a fucking TV and basically they're just all going to the arena and watching him wrestle every six months. No! They want to have three fucking hours every fucking goddamn week. And out of all those three hours, there's no fucking world champion. And one of their best wrestlers is not on the show. And this is something that we should get behind? I mean, did Vince McMahon really think that we were going to buy into this? Are we really going to fucking get behind a concept like that? Fuck Vince McMahon! What a fucking dumbass! 
I, I, I mean, you know, he's a smart man. He's a smart bullshit artist is what he is. Just like any other fucking con artist out there. Just like any other fucking scheming ass motherfucking liar. Just like any fucking cheating girlfriend. Just like any fucking bastard of a, you know, former best friend that lied to you. You know, fucking stuck the knife in your back and turned it on you. You know, and then lied straight to your face with fucking excuses, fucking excuses. You know, piled a mile high. Fucking excuses out the fucking ass. I mean, a proctologist could, you know, dip his hand in Vince McMahon's fucking ass, which he's so fucking fond of. Vince McMahon kiss my ass, fucking clown. Well, Vince McMahon kiss my fucking ass. Vince McMahon, I bet you reach in there and you'll see a whole bunch of excuses. Now, I don't know what excuses physically look like, but I'm sure we'll be able to find them out when the fucking proctologist reaches into Vince McMahon's ass and pulls out a fucking fistful of fucking lies. I can't wait to see what lies actually look like. Because I don't think they actually have a fucking physical form. Holy fuck. What a liar. What a fucking deceiver. What a fucking deceiver of the truth. A masker of the truth. What a fucking con artist he is. To fucking say that this is his new strategy. And then, oh, we all wanted to hear this, of course. I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. I do want to hear more. I want to hear what more are you going to talk about, Vince? What more are you going to lie about? What more bullshit excuses are you going to use? And Vince, this is where Stone Cold actually stopped him. And said Sting. Sting, he said that, you know, um, Sting is a spectacle as well. He's one of those guys that you really don't need to see that much of because after a while it's going to lose its spectacle. Once again, I can kind of see where he's coming from. But then again, it's like he doesn't have a lot of fucking choices. Because really, at the fucking end of the day, it's not like they have a big giant fucking roster where they could really just, you know, oh, we don't really need this. No, they need everybody they can fucking get. All right? Their best wrestler is on the injured reserve list for fucking nine years. You know, Daniel Bryan, I don't know when the fuck he's coming back. He came back fucking last week, but he's not wrestling anytime soon. I don't know. Is he going to be back in time for WrestleMania? Is he going to be back in time for the fucking next Bicentennial or whatever the fuck they call it? I don't know. The fucking dinosaurs will be fucking back. The Jurassic World will be released before fucking Daniel Bryan starts wrestling again. So what fucking real choice do they have? They have to load up all three hours of an exciting, you know, entertaining shit. That's why no one wants to fucking watch. Because it's boring. Because you're fucking proud of a six-man tag that was putting people to fucking sleep. I mean, god damn. I mean, have a little bit of excitement on this show. Be a little bit fucking adventurous. Oh, no, let's keep it. Th and that's when Stone Cold stopped him and said, Vince, Vince. Well, he didn't scream like that, but that's me getting excited about it. Anyway, but Vince McMahon, he said, you know, uh, you're saying everybody's a spectacle, but he's like, you know, um, this is who people want to see and all that. And, you know, Vince McMahon says he understands that. But he's like, uh, you know, you'll probably see him by WrestleMania. Then Stone Cold asked him, again, uh, speaking about WrestleMania, Macho Man, when's he going to be inducted? And then, he, you know, he said, uh, and uh, Vince LeGrand was promising. <laughs> Macho Man should have been fucking inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2012, which was the Hall of Fame following his death. There's no goddamn excuse why Macho Man should... That's just beyond disrespectful to not have the man honored in the Hall of Fame. The, he, he'd been dead for a year. The least you could fucking do is fucking put him in the Hall of Fame, you fucking bastard! Getting everybody all upset. I mean, what is this? What it's about? It's about giving back to the fans. No! It's all about fucking pissing us the fuck off! We want Macho Man in that Hall of Fame because he's one of the best damn wrestlers of all time. Even you say he wrestled one of the best fucking matches in the history of your fucking WrestleMania show. I mean, goddamn. I mean, what, what, what more did Macho Man have to do to earn his spot in the fucking Hall of Fame? And he's, you know, he can't even guarantee. I mean, well, I mean, that would take away from the surprise if he admitted it. So I appreciate it if he didn't. But I really do hope. That 2015 marks the year that the Macho Man makes it into the Hall of Fame. Please, fucking God, please put him in.
you fucking bastard. It's the least you could fucking do. After all the shit we have to sit through, should be kissing our fucking asses for making you money. Watching this shit on the fucking network. They don't deserve a dime with the way you treat us. But, pretty much, you know, that's the podcast in a nutshell. There's some other things, you know, I'm forgetting. But, you know, thing was, Vince McMahon is very out of touch. Um, he really is. I mean, he was acting like things were better. I'm so happy that at least he admitted that the boys in the back are not as motivated as they once were. And that they should be, given the fact that they had social media and stuff like that. When guys like Stone Cold were just able to get by on their personalities alone. But here's the thing that I couldn't understand. I just want to leave off with this. He criticized Cesaro for not having a personality. Who has a personality in this company? C can you name it? Does anybody really have a unique personality in this fucking company? No! The, that guy, Cena, is... You know, he does have a personality. He does that goofy at times, tells jokes, but he doesn't really have a personality. He's not a tough guy. You know, he's not a full-on fucking goofball. I mean, he is a goofball, don't get me wrong, but I mean, he's not like Eugene or Doink the Clown goofball. But it's not really a character. There's no character. You know, story, he's talking about, uh, talking about... Oh, that's the other thing I forgot. I mentioned in the Raw Review. He said that, you know, he can't just throw Cesaro out there in a match and have him wrestle a guy for a half an hour without there being a story. And I agree with that. Because then, then they'd be like fucking TNA. They'd be like TNA then. You know, they, where they would just have matches with no fucking story and you don't give a fucking shit about any of the characters because even though when they steal wrestlers from WWE or, you know, from the fucking WWE graveyard like the Dudleys and the Hardys and they put them in the same match like TLC, it's not going to be the same because you don't have the same history going into it. And that's what TNA fans don't understand is it doesn't have the same history. That's why it's not as good as when it was showcased in WWE because it doesn't have the same spectacle. There's that word again, spectacle. I know, but that's it is true. There is a lot of truth to what Vince McMahon said in this interview. It wasn't all bullshit. It was just a lot of fucking lopsided fucking truth. You know, just the truth as Vince McMahon sees it. There is a lot of truth to it, but it was a lot of fucking bullshit. That's all I can say about that. You know... You know, but Vince McMahon is all about stories and characters. But the thing is, where are the fucking stories and characters? These are not stories. Eric Rowan going up to the big show and saying, I don't like bullies is not a fucking story. That's a fucking joke. That's nothing. That's poor writing is what it is. You know, yes, maybe technically it is a story, you know, from a general perspective. I mean, yeah. Any fucking idiot could write a fucking novel and call it a fucking story. There's a story within the novel, but it's not a good story. It's just a bunch of fucking gibberish. But it's kind of like that episode of South Park where they made that book and they made a, a, a stupid book on purpose and everybody thought it was a work of genius. It's kind of like Vince McMahon. He thinks it's a work of genius when really all it is is just a bunch of mishmash of just fucking nonsense. That's all it is. I mean, that's the best way I could put it. It's fucking nonsense is what the WWE is at this point. It's just fucking shit. And to really even allude to the fact that there's any real positives on the horizon, I mean, this is a company that's that's really has no plans for the future. I mean, you have Brock Lesnar as your champion. He's not even there. I mean, what does that mean for the future? You're, you know, you're telling Seth Rollins is the future, but, you know, you're not really building a lot towards it. You got guys like Dolph Ziggler who, you know, you want to build up, but you're still keeping him in that IC title feud. You know what I mean? There's not really a lot to uh, to really expect here for the future. And especially after this interview, Vince McMahon was saying a lot of, you know, IDK. I don't know, you know. I don't know why this person's not getting over. I don't know why Cesaro, you know. It's because the thing is you have to fucking do something. This is your company. Do something. Do something to change it. Don't sit there in your fucking hands and just wait and hope for the best. You have to fucking change it, Vince. And I hope Vince, like, I mean, you know, the thing is, why do I feel like with Stone Cold's interview it was like one in one year and out the other? I really do fucking feel that. But anyway, um, yeah. 
Vince McMahon, uh, you really surprised me in this interview. I mean, I can't really say I'm that surprised. A lot of the stuff I had heard in the past did come true. But yeah, for the most part, I am pretty fucking shocked at how disillusioned the man is. Well, that's all I can say about the podcast. You know, this video's going on for a fucking half an hour now of me fucking complaining about it. But I did enjoy it. And I, I did like that, you know, this was something that Vince McMahon wanted to do and he willingly did it. And, you know, for the most part, he was honest. This is how he feels. You know, I could really tell that they, they were genuine answers. This is how he feels. You know, it's bullshit. But, you know, he wouldn't commit to something like Brock Lesnar's title reign if that's not what he wanted to do. So that's not lying. That's just Vince. That's Vince's desperation. But anyway, go watch it. I totally recommend it, motherfuckers. <laughs>